Today's video, the Kick Crusader gets spotlighted as we have a look at the new Mondo T's Batman the Animated Series, the Batman 1-6 scale collectible figure. Based on the seminal Batman the Animated Series, the Batman 1-6 scale collectible figure stays true to the animated classic. It features approximately 30 points of articulation, switch out hands, heads, accessories, and a bat symbol figure stand. We're also going to be having a look at the Mondo Deluxe Exclusive, which features a switch out wind swept cape, goggles, a unique thumbs up of bat approval hand, unique batarang, and a switch out hardeck head. A big thank you, by the way, to Mondo Tees for providing this early sample copy. We're going to go ahead and first figure out how tall Batman stands. I'm going to go just past his head, instead measuring to the tips of his ears and stopping the tape measure right there. The Ultra Measuretron 5000 tells us that the new Batman release from Mondo Tees stands 11.4 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 29.1 just about short of being 30 centimeters in height. What I like is that the figure comes included with a display stand and not only has it been printed on, but you can see it's actually been engraved. So the VAT logo is actually a, at a different, well, not quite as different degree, but you can feel where it's been textured into the display base. The adjustable neck is also a little bit different than what we normally would see. Normally, a six scale figure treatment gets a flat adjustable neck. Here instead, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's actually more like a diamond. That's really nice. Just gives a little extra texturing, a little bit more depth, if you will. It still has the support cradle in which you can support the figure against. The figure technically doesn't need a display stand, but as Mondo Tees continues to release more of the future Batman animated series figures, it would be nice to be consistent, probably likely still display the figure with his included display stand. The figure truly gets an extensive library of different accessories and swappable options. We'll go ahead and look through those first. And then we'll have a look at this impressive figure. So for starters, he does come with a variation of different interchangeable head options. I'm sorry, Batman, what I may actually do is just remove your heads currently from the socket as we have a look and just make sure this is gonna stand properly. There we go. 
Currently, I just have him with a sort of a neutral expressioned face, a line representing a mouth, sort of a stern look of Batman, and an ongoing traditional look for the Cape Crusader. But Mondo Tease also includes a more grimmest face of Batman, and really not much has changed from the cow's nose onward. It's the same expression on his eyes. The only thing that's really different is the expression on his, on his mouth. Paint is good on both of these. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of extra flesh tone that has made its way up to the top portion of the nose. Other than that, a neat looking, well executed, looks exactly like it was taken from the show. And something that I'll talk probably consistently through this review, I'll mention this, I love the cell shaded that look that they've given the figure. You can see here on the side that they've given that like a flesh tone, slightly darker than his overall coloring here. And it makes its way also up to the sides of his cheeks. Just a nice little extra little bit of shading, which also, as you see here, makes its way also to the top of his cowl. We'll talk a little bit, like I said, more of that in a second. The other interchangeable head option, if you get the standard release figure, is the Smiling Batman. Something you don't see too often, but when you do, it's something that's certainly most memorable. There's the three variations of the head sculpts, all quite unique from one another, but again, all unique from one another based solely on the mouth expression. He also gets himself a series of interchangeable hands. Currently, I've got him with a pair of closed fists. Not too exciting, is it? But he does come with variations of different head hands that you can use for one of his many different accessories included. For starters, I guess one of the more exaggerated hand sculpts are these ones right here, suited for holding his grapple gun. Either hand, which I like. I don't like that when you're relegated really to only one side of the figure to dictate where you want to have him holding his accessory. Here they give you the options of having it really displayed on either hand. And even speaking a little bit about that additional shading, on the contrast of that, I love the additional highlighting of the blue that they've added to the otherwise dark nature of the gloves. So he's got those hands and he's got a couple of Batarang holding hands, a fair number of Batarangs he's going to have as well. And then he's got regular just gripping hands, depending on, again, what you want to display him with. Let's talk a little bit about the grapple gun, shall we? The grapple gun comes in two forms, one with a fully retracted uh, grapple claw. You can see that they've painted the little red activation button on the top, given a slight sheen, a black sheen to the coloring here of the grapple gun and it can be housed in either one of his hands. You're just going to wedge it, as you can see, with the fingers in front, the main activation button sitting very patiently underneath Batman's thumb, waiting for him to activate it. And again, you can display it on either hand. Let me just show you right there. Now, this hand is slightly shaped differently, but still the same effect works. As you can see, the thumb is now sitting a little bit closer, actually. You know what? I flipped this around. There we go. And there we go. So it comes with that version of the grapple gun. The other thing he comes included with, let me just get this out of his hand now. He comes with the grapple gun with the full wire. And wire being, or full line, is done in wire. There's the grapple hook fully extended out. And the zip line, the line that's coming out from the grapple gun, is all done in black wiring. A nice effect and it allows you a little bit of posability options. As you saw at the beginning of this review, I ended up just having it spiraled like this, shooting it off, shooting it out from the actual grapple gun. You may require a little bit of maybe clear fishing line if you want to have it fully extended, but it actually holds up rather well for having it spiraled the way that it does. It seems to hold itself and it doesn't drop too much. A lot of that can be contributed to the fact that the line is a little bit thicker rather than a thinner line. So there's two variations to the grapple gun if you wanted to use that as well. Something else that Batman comes included with is his gas mask. If I go ahead, say for example, and grab the smiling Batman, this is just attached via elastic. You're just gonna mount it to the top, slide it down, there we go, and it mounts over top of Batman's head. Certainly a readily remedied fix versus giving us a brand new head sculpt that already has this built in. I mean, really, for the way that a gas mask would be put over top of Batman's head anyways, why didn't they just simply do that any, anyways, instead of having the head fully sculpted with 
the gas mask. So I'm glad that it's something that you could easily remove if you wanted to. You could even have it draping at the bottom of Batman's chin if you wanted to as well. And again, this is all being done by the elastic on the side, just attaching its way around Batman's head. Other accessories. And a nice little fan nod. He comes with this. This is his little container of chicken soup in which he defeats Mr. Freeze. If you remember, Mr. Freeze has him in his grasp and Batman reaches behind somehow from his utility belt and proceeds to smash the container of chicken soup all over Mr. Freeze's dome, which causes the cracking and Mr. Fe Freeze to be defeated. The lid is not removable. I don't really know why you would need it necessarily removable. But it's, again, a nice little nod to the show in which the character is based from. All their accessories includes is a little tape deck. Now, I don't know if this is specific to any one particular episode. It, there was also, like, a tape that Batman had procured in which it showed Mr. Freeze and how he had the accident, the harmful accident. I also thought this might have been the tape deck in which that episode in which Batman is inside, locked inside like a safe. And he uses the line, because it's an explosive, he uses the line from the tape to bring the explosive device over to the, the wall in which he blows it out and he escapes that way. It could also very easily just be a regular tape. You can see that there are some buttons on the top there, just a little recording device. It's, again, a nice little extra thing that comes included with Batman. Then he also comes included with what looks to be a trigger device cast solely in black plastic. No additional paint that has been added to it, but it does look like it's a little, just a little trigger detonation button. For fans of, you, of uh, Batarangs, there we go. There's one Batarang. There's two Batarangs. He comes with two variations. I probably will gravitate a little bit more towards this one, but he also comes with this one as well to, like I said, variations. And there is actually a third Batarang that comes included when you get the Mondo Tees exclusive version, but I want to basically start this review by showing you everything that comes with the standard release, if it is the standard release you're out and looking for. Now let's talk about the Mondo Tees exclusive. And there's enough, I think, to justify picking up the exclusive versus the regular release. For example, and the primary, I guess the one big one, well, that's not necessarily true because the cape is pretty cool too, is you get yourself the head sculpt of Hardak, a rather neat robotic version of the Cape Crusader in, I believe, two episodes. I don't believe it was just the one episode that Hardak appeared in. It's done very nicely with this endoskeleton skull underneath now the ripped away fleshed portion of Batman's side face. A nice contrasting, almost two-face uh, portrayal here. A nice red that's been added in there and the white there of the teeth. And a really nice exceptional piece. As we move away from that and move on to some of his other exclusive items, the Mondo Tees exclusive also gives you the thumbs up, the Batman A-OK, -okay, which has certainly made its rounds on social media as like the popular meme to use if you're congratulating somebody. And I think, in fact, if you are sending somebody the meme as literally thumbs up, Batman is one of the available options there showing the thumbs up, which also works quite, quite well if we, again, pair it up with the smiling Batman face. You have the little thumbs up, like I did at the beginning of this review. The other thing he comes included with for the exclusive is the uh, the little visor in which you can put it over top of Batman's head. Simply, again, the same thing as what we did with the gas mask. You're just going to drape it over top of Batman's eyes. It looks probably a little bit more ridiculous pairing it with a smiling Batman, but you get the idea. It's still got the elasticized closure, so you just drape it in over top of Batman's existing head. And again, works just as well as the, uh, the gas mask that we've looked at as well. And last, but certainly not least, before we get to the cape. Boy, oh boy, the cape's going to be pretty cool. Uh, he does also come with another variation of the Batarang. Now, this is the exclusive. This is the standard release. There are slight variations between one and then the other. Again, a couple of variations. Um, it's interesting that the, the Batarang here seems a little bit more shinier and a little darker black versus the one that came defaulted with the standard release Batman. Okay, so let's have a look at the largest of the exclusive items, and that would be Batman's windswept cape. Covering over Batman is the windswept cape. This is a side accessory piece that comes exclusive 
to the uh, Mondo T's exclusive version. So if you want a swaying cape on Batman, this is the best route to go. It's made of a hard plastic, yet there is a little bit of give to it. Um, also, if you watch the beginning of this review, when we did the look at the box, the Mondo T's exclusive version comes with two boxes. The yellow box being the standard Batman with all the things that we've looked at. And then the black box, which is banded together, the black box contains the cape, the hard act head, uh, the Batarang, and of course the visor. So to change out this on Batman, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take off his head like that. And take off the cape it just pops fairly easy actually off it's not attached by any means with glue or or tab points there's batman's body before we get the cape going and you're just going to take the cape drape it over top of his shoulders like like so and just sort of wedge it down just kind of push it down as best as you can then go ahead and replace the head pop that in place and now you've got Batman with his flowing cape. Now the thing about the cape though, is that it does rest low. Low into the fact that it actually rests onto whatever surface you've got the figure displayed on. I would say for the fact that the weight is now slightly off on the figure, you may actually wanna use a display base moving forward. Luckily the display base is included. This is certainly something I'm gonna entertain displaying Batman with. Now imagining if you will, Batman now holding say a grapple gun in his hand, this is gonna be a really great look for Batman. And it's nice that they include it as an exclusive and not really part of the standard version. So that really, if you didn't want to, if you just pick up the standard release, you're not paying into the fact that you're now getting this as an included piece if you don't actually want to display it. This is a great idea, and I hope it's something that they move forward with with future Mondo T's uh, animated series, Batman animated series figures. Now, for the rest of this review, I've defaulted Batman back to the way he originally looks, shy of just, of course, changing, deciding whatever head I'm gonna go with for the rest of this review. I guess I could probably go with this head sculpt. So once again, to take off the head, really super easy. You're just gonna pop it right off of the dumbbell ball joint. There's the ball joint there, there's the ball joint there, and then replace it. There's the socket area of his head. Just pop that back into place and you're good to go. Love the head sculpt. There's not really a whole lot negative I could necessarily say about the figure. He has the same color palettes as he does in the animated series, although I do feel it's a little light. It's primarily, it's the, dark, it's the coloring here of this blue that they've used. In the show, it of course will vary depending on what light will hit Batman. In some cases, actually, most of his cowl ends up appearing all blue. Here, we've only got a little, well, not quite little traces. There's the majority of the top part of his cowl is all painted here in blue. The sides of his ears are also done in blue, which carries its way down into its neck and around the front of the cape. A really nice touch. And then you've got additional blue running along the pointed point, uh, pointed part of his nose there. A little bit of shading also goes a long way, and I love the fact that they've also included that, like I said, into the side. Could this be a little bit darker? Perhaps one shade darker but the only thing I would have maybe changed differently to the figure, but the coloring is definitely spot on. Shy of, again, like this being maybe a slight shade darker is about the only thing I would have done differently to it. But it has a glorious, glorious shape to him. Overly proportioned, very broad in the upper torso, slightly a little bit more spindlier in the leg, but again, that's based on the model in which the, the figure is derived from. Got some nice shading that's been added around his mid torso, around his abdomen area. And there's very little shading happening here, but where it is, it certainly counts. You got like the shading right underneath his pectoral muscles, which if we bring the arms up slightly, that shading also carries into the arm paired area, the section right underneath his arms, for example. Uh, it's not a lot of shading happening on the back, primarily for the gray at the very least. The gray, and gray doesn't get nearly as much the treatment that the dark blue or the black, if you will, would get with some additional of the lighter blue rep represented here on the, on the feet. And it's one of the few instances in which we've seen an animated series Batman figure that actually has show accurate shading. And you're just getting here in a much larger format. It's not overly busy. Too much of that blue, I think, would have detracted from the figure. I think the level of blue that they've added is just right. You've got the interior of the blue also happening here on the 
inside of the cape. But like I said, primarily most of this darker blue on the back. Could the shading of the blue, like I said, be a little bit darker? Maybe a little bit. I think the gray is good. The flesh tone also is good on Batman. But I do feel like, like the cape, the cowl area, could be at the very least one shade darker just so that you get a more stark contrast between like the lighter blue and then the darker blue which makes up the majority of his cape and cowl. This Batman has some pretty crazy articulation and we've already looked at the head sculpt it's sitting on that dumbbell ball joint. When you are rotating the head it rotates all the way around it hinges up it hinges down it angles left and angles right. One thing though is when you are taking off the head, you'll notice that it has sadly scraped a little bit of the paint rear really here on the neck. Now it really, if you put the head on, I'll do that right now, it does hide it. Even rotating the head, it's only until you rotate it to the side that you notice a little bit of the paint has scraped off. If you're looking at it from the front, you may not necessarily see it as much, but it's just, an, again, something I want to point out. This side's not so much the problem because it's cast in this color. It's this side here that gets a little bit of that paint flaking off. It's not even so much flaking off either. It's just sort of worn by just moving the head back and forth. It's sort of just worn a little bit of that paint coming off there. Batman also has an upper torso ball joint, but it's surprisingly actually the ball joint that's right underneath his pectoral muscles that's actually the thing that's moving. Equally so to that, he has a waist swivel. Uh, his arms move forward and his arms move back. They hinge in and out, not really by much though. That's about as much out as it looks like it's gonna go. It could in theory move even further out, but it just is a very stiff joint and I don't wanna force it too much. He does have a hinge in the elbow. In fact, actually, he's got two hinges in the elbow, one there and then one there. The hinges work independently to one another, starting and stopping depending on where you want to display Batman's arms. And then as we move further down the arms, he doesn't have a swivel here. However, he swivels right there, basically where the bicep connects to the elbow. The hands rotate all the way around. They hinge also back and forth. Hands are also very easy to ch change out. I'll show you that also in a second. Um, legs, when we get to the legs, his legs split out. Seems almost as if there's a bit of a ratchet joint happening in there. The legs move also back. He has a single and double working out to be a two hinge joint in the knee. And then he's also got full posability in the feet. Luckily, the feet, ankle pivot wise, up and down wise, so for the feet are nice and stiff on this figure. I haven't had any problems with. Now for the fact that this figure is so big as he is, a lot of the weight will be centric on, say for example, his ankles. So far so good though, I haven't had any problems with the ankles becoming loose. Nor would they really become loose because a lot of the support is sitting on the cradle when you have them on his display base. Last but certainly not least, like I said, I'll just quickly show you how to change out his hands, for example. Why don't we wrap up this review by grabbing, say for example, the thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and just grab the side of his arm, wiggle off and pop off the hand. And one of the reasons why I want to show you the hand swapping out is to show you that each of the hands have their own pegs. We probably saw that anyways when we were looking at the interchangeable hands. And then we're just going to replace the hand to the one that we want get Batman posed and you know what while we're at it let's swap out let's do this right swap it out to the smiling Batman and again we'll just attach attach it to the ball joint there wiggle that into place and you've got yourself one happy one satisfied looking Batman and I have to agree with him I'm pretty happy with what Mondo Tease has done with the Cape Crusader here for those who are looking to pick up the Batman animated series, one six scale figure of Batman, Mondo Tees had on their website this guy slated for a ship date of the fourth quarter of 2018. So basically the end of the year, this guy was looking to ship out. Most likely you will now be able to start seeing this guy popping up in various online markets if you guys are interested. The price point on Mondo Tease's website for the Mondo exclusive was $150. $150 gave you everything in the standard release along with the hardack head, the uh, visor, and of course the swept away cape that we also looked at in this review. 
$150 for all that, I think is a pretty good price for the type of figure that you're getting here. Sort of a scaled up version of the Cape Crusader that we've seen in action figure form, just a lot bigger and a lot cooler because he's got so much size to him. He stacks up with other six scale figures and even though the medium, the type of material that they used for him is different than say a cloth bound character, the quality and care that you see that they put into him is just as good. He has a ton of different cool show specific accessories. Love the fact that he even included the little container of chicken soup. That's that's a level of detail that I really appreciate. At the time of this video as well, I know that online we've already seen a couple of images surfacing of their other six scale Batman animated series figures. And I think one of them was Mr. Freeze, if I memory serves me correctly. Definitely going to be looking forward to picking that one up and definitely adding that one to the existing collection that we've already started here with Batman. Like I said, again, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, unfortunately he sold out, I believe, over on Mondo Tease's website, but you should be able to find this guy now in most online stores as they were shipping this guy the fourth quarter of 2018. Today we were having a look at the Mondo Tease. This was the Batman animated series, and this was the one six scale figure of Batman. A really cool looking figure. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Mondo reviews, I've got a playlist also that you guys can check out. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos are going to be coming soon to this channel. And as always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.